As pretty much any woodworker will tell you, sanding is a dusty job, but somebody's got to do it. Whether you need to finish a wooden table or paint over a fresh drywall job, chances are you're going to have to do some sanding. While the days of hand sanding are hardly behind us, many sanding jobs can be completed much more quickly and easily with a variety of portable power sanders. In the next few minutes, we'll look at the most popular types of portable power sanders. We'll also discuss their proper uses and some safety tips for trouble-free operation. Portable sanders are often used for smoothing and or leveling surfaces. Woodworkers also use sanders for preparing surfaces such as drywall and for removing paint or varnish from wooden furniture. Sanders are also handy for shaping or rounding edges. Many woodworkers appreciate using power sanders because they remove wood faster than sanding by hand. Of course, it's common for power sanders to leave behind some scratches even with fine sanding. While this may be perfectly acceptable for rough work, it's not good for fine furniture, crafts, or cabinetry. For projects where it's essential to eliminate all visible scratches, some hand sanding is usually required. Hand sanding is also necessary for projects that are too small for a power sander to tackle. Power sanders are great for getting the first stages of sanding completed quickly. Portable power sanders are available in three general types, belt sanders, pad sanders, and detail sanders. A belt sander uses a continuous loop or belt of sandpaper that fits over two rollers. Belt sanders contain one rear roller and one or two front rollers. The sander's internal drive belt transmits power from the motor to spin the rear roller. The front roller turns with the movement of the sanding belt. Designed for sanding flat surfaces, belt sanders are ideal for rough sanding jobs. Sure, belt sanders can be bulky and somewhat heavy, but the heft of the tool offers the desired leverage on larger surfaces. Belt sanders are designed for heavy-duty sanding, not for finish work. Belt sanders come in various sizes, with sizing determined by the width and length of the belt. The most common sizes are 3 by 21 inches, 3 by 24 inches, and 4 by 24 inches. The first number refers to the belt width, while the second number refers to the overall belt length. Belt sander speed is measured in surface feet per minute, or SFPM. Typical speeds range from 600 to 1500 surface feet per minute. Variable speed models allow users to adjust the unit's sanding power. When using a belt sander, guide the sander with the grain of the wood from left to right. Belt sanders are heavy and powerful, so there's very little need to press down hard. Just hold on, guide the tool, and let it do the hard work. Some sanders come equipped with dust collection bags. Regardless of the sander type, most dust bags work best at less than one-third capacity. In other words, empty the dust bag often. Next, let's look at pad sanders, which are so named because of the sanding pad at the base of the unit. Classification in the pad sander category can get a little confusing because these sanders are referred to by several different names. This category is sometimes referred to as palm sanders because of the palm-sized grips found on the top of the handheld units. There are two basic types of pad sanders, orbital sanders and random orbit sanders. Both orbital sanders and random orbit sanders are excellent for general purpose sanding. Orbital sanders use sanding sheets. For this reason, they're sometimes referred to as sheet sanders. The sanding surface of an orbital sander moves in a slight circular pattern, or orbit. Orbital sanders must be moved along the grain of the wood to avoid scratching. Orbital sander size is generally determined by the size of its sanding surface, quarter sheet, third sheet, or half sheet. These sizes refer to sections of a full sheet of standard sandpaper. For a quarter sheet sander, you can buy pre-cut sheets or simply cut a regular sheet of sandpaper into four equal pieces. A random orbit sander then moves in a circular motion and back and forth to reduce or eliminate visible swirl patterns. The unit's sanding pad is attached to an offset bearing that gives the pad's motion a random pattern. Because of this random orbit, you can move the sander in any direction without damaging the surface. Variable speed units offer additional sanding control. 
Random orbit sanders use special sanding discs that vary by manufacturer. The sanding pad surface of the unit has holes that aid in the removal of sawdust during operation. For the dust removal process to work as intended, the holes in the sanding disc must be lined up with the holes on the pad. Different sanding disc types use different adhesion methods. There's hook and loop, which is similar to Velcro, and there's pressure sensitive adhesive, or PSA, which is basically sandpaper with a sticky backing. Pad sanders, remember that category refers to both orbital and random orbit sanders, are useful for all kinds of sanding projects, including furniture, walls, ceilings, floors, cabinetry, and other types of woodwork. Orbital, or sheet sanders, are best for refining the finish of a surface that has already been sanded. The action of a random orbit sander is much more aggressive than that of an orbital sander. For this reason, random orbit sanders are better suited for smoothing joints, removing coatings, and refining rougher surfaces. Even though pad sanders don't match the power of belt sanders, you still need to keep safety in mind. These tools can strip skin just as quickly as they strip wood, so always be cautious when using any power sander. Never, under any circumstances, should you touch moving sandpaper with bare skin. When the time comes to change the sanding belt, sheet, or disc, always unplug the sander first. Of course, proper safety includes wearing eye protection and face protection, too. Okay, now let's move on to our last type of power sander, the detail sander, also referred to as a finishing sander. This type of sander is great for sanding around odd shapes and tiny nooks and crannies in woodwork. Detail sanders are also good for sanding in tight spots where a larger sander just won't fit. Detail sanders are often used for crafts and millwork. This particular model comes with multiple attachments for various applications in addition to sanding. When using power sanders of any type, it is very important to apply light, even pressure. Use long, even strokes and let the moving parts of the sander do all the work. Remember, you're sanding the wood. You don't need to scrub it. Some power sanders feature an attachment for a vacuum cleaner hose. When all that sawdust is drawn into a wet dry vac as opposed to covering the surface being sanded, the sander can do its work a lot more efficiently. We've talked a lot about sanding and power sanders thus far in this segment. Now let's shift gears a little bit and talk about sandpaper. The overall abrasive quality of sandpaper is measured by grit. The grit number refers to the number of abrasive particles per inch of sandpaper. The higher the grit number, the finer the sandpaper. When sanding, always progress from coarse to fine grit sandpaper, that is, from lower numbers to higher ones. There's no need to use each and every grit under the sun. In most cases, sanding three times, first with a coarse grit, then with an intermediate grit, then with a fine grit, yields perfectly acceptable results. Here's a final tip for efficient sanding. Be sure to change the sandpaper, sanding belt, pad, or disc as soon as there is a noticeable decrease in effectiveness. Some people think using worn sandpaper is just fine. Their reasoning is that it's sanding more finely, which is the ultimate objective anyway. Unfortunately, it doesn't really work that way. While it's true that the particles are getting smaller, they're also getting duller. Worn sandpaper does not offer the kind of consistency necessary for a quality sanding job.